Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn what's new in Team Foundation Server 2015. We'll be looking at two big things. Number one, what has changed structure-wise in Team Foundation Server in 2015. Number two, feature updates. What has enhanced in features of Team Foundation Server and what are the new features that's available in Team Foundation Server 2015. My future plan is that I'll be covering each feature in a separate video where I will use that feature from the scratch as well as I'll cover all the updates that's available in uh, TFS 2015. I have put together these changes. These are high level changes. Our first change is license change. This is a big change. If you have installed your Team Foundation Server previously under basic license, these features were not available for you uh, unless you have uh, installed Team Foundation Server under Ultimate or Premium license, then these features were available for you. But right here, Work Items Chart Authoring, that's a new feature uh, which is available under TFS 2015 under Basic License. So this will save you some money. Web-based test, test execution, Agile uh, portfolio management, Work Items Chart Authoring, uh, team rooms. Again, these were not available under basic license in previous uh, TFS versions, but now they are available under basic license. Other big thing is database schema changes. Significant changes to the database schema has happened. Actual upgrade is done offline. This is especially important if you're upgrading your previous version to TFS uh, 2015. You need to keep in mind that um, there are a lot of uh, changes has happened in database schema. Uh, especially one thing that uh, uh, SQL Server 2008 is no longer supported with Team Foundation Server 2015. If you're looking to upgrade Team Foundation Server um, from your previous version and you're using SQL Server 2008, you need to upgrade your SQL Server before you can upgrade the Team Foundation Server. And um, uh, upgrade takes a long time, uh, but uh, the good thing is that a certain time-consuming task can be completed when TFS is online, and that will decrease your outage as far as Team Foundation Server goes. Upgrade wizard available to upgrade from 2013 uh, to 2015. This is when you try to upgrade from 2013 to 2015, and it, it detects that 2013 is uh, already installed. It will pop the upgrade wizard automatically, and you can take it from there. Other two, two changes, we had uh, two uh, extension changes right here. Um, we could uh, integrate with the project server uh, using TF, uh, TFS. So in, in TFS 2015, we have a separate install for, for project server. You cannot use the same install and do the integration of uh, project server extension. Same with SharePoint's uh, extension. Uh, Team Foundation special installer is no longer available. You have to go to the server if you are uh, choosing the advanced. When I talk about the ins ins basic installation and advanced installation, in advanced installation, your SharePoint and project server are the separate servers and you're trying to integrate with your Team Foundation server. So if you're doing that, keep in mind that up here, especially the sh SharePoint extension, it used to be workaround, it would give you uh, an error that you, your memory is less than 8 gig, even if it's uh, a 16 gig, then uh, you won't be able to uh, integrate using the same installer or same configuration of Team Foundation Server on the server. But uh, you had to go on SharePoint server and integrate with TFS. And now it is mandatory. It's not workaround anymore. They have taken the TFS installer out and you have to go to the SharePoint server and use the Team Foundation Server installer there in order to configure your SharePoint uh, integration with TFS. So uh, these are basically for the administration part of uh, Team Foundation Server 2015. Uh, these things are really important to look at if you are upgrading or if you are going to install Team Foundation Server 2015. Let's cover feature updates. Our first one is identity control and avatar. This goes back to user profile. You can have full name, email address, and avatar in user profile. This is especially important if you have same display name in your organization and you can be it can be distinguished with avatar. Um, number two, you can also retrieve the most recent users who has been assigned work items. The list of that, if any user does not show in that particular list, you can click on search uh, button and search for any user in your account. So number two is taskboard. 
teams can show basically bugs um, on their backlogs and boards uh, independent of template before that if you wanted to do that either team or you as an individual individual wanted to do that you have to use a specific template but now you can use any template and can show your bugs on um, on your backlogs and board uh, product backlog updates uh, you can drill down um, to more layers of backlog even to the task level and you can toggle levels using parent filter this is a, again a great enhancement that you can use a filter in your uh, product backlog and take a look on different level uh, work items owned by other teams can be viewed with one glance number four uh, up here is sprint backlog and task board updates there are certain tasks um, they don't have the parent task so there is a little tag that's available to uh, for you when you look at that task and it doesn't have parent task uh, there is a tag that will tell you that uh, this is unparented task and also before that pending work items warning was weren't available now you can uh, basically there is a little warning shows up if there are pending work items and you can click on pending work items and look at uh, uh, that why they are pending number five customize and configure your cards <clears throat> user can customize and configure your card they can put different information on their card uh, to for, for their team's view or for their uh, reviewer or testers you have option for showing data on your card you have options for showing tags directly on your task priority and severity of the bugs on your card and also in certain cases you can show the comments on your card that uh, came from tester or you have put down there the Kanban board uh, updates this is again exciting adding and editing directly from the Kanban board before that it was just a read-only view but now you can basically add it right there you can reorder the columns um, and the board that's available up there um, you can use the filter um, in order to filter certain updates in your Kanban board new feature uh, is added in Kanban board um, which is called um, split columns um, and it has basically uh, two sections one is doing section and other is done if you are working on a specific task you can put it in a doing section and if you are done with the particular task you can put it in done section that way your teammate would know that uh, their work has been started or they're supposed to start their work because you are done with your work you can use um, uh, anyway these two uh, particular uh, doing and done sections uh, other new um, feature up here is swim lens they are available they are horizontal um, and you can add multiple columns uh, to give a quick overview of your work items or if you are managing a project in um, team foundation server you can basically take a look um, on the different columns and you can add and remove columns to show the quick overview of that particular project number seven up here turn off the first column on CFD chart this is uh, again big before that if you couldn't turn off the first column and it would load all your uh, backlogs and it would take time to show you the chart now you can go ahead and omit first column in CFD which shows the long backlog and uh, uh, by default it's still enabled you can go and add it and uh, uh, unselect uh, the first column that would show only the active items in your chart and again this is a, a good enhancement <clears throat> next is a scale agile framework built-in support is available now uh, there is a new work item added in team foundation server 2015 called epic work uh, and it has uh, two types one is architectural and other is business so if you're working on any feature or any uh, project that is basically architectural as far as the uh, TFS goes um, then you can put it epic item architectural if there are changes that you need to do that is, uh, business requires that you can create epic work item called business so um, process template renamed before that you were not able to uh, rename your template because a lot of things were dependent on that particular template um, now it is locked however you can import export using template manager and customize your process template uh, current iteration query this is again the big one if you have created a query uh, to uh, retrieve certain information in your uh, team foundation server and a uh, new iteration is added you had to change your query in order to get the information about the new iteration but now this is auto update uh, one limitation there is that uh, it doesn't really work with Excel so if you uh, 
uh, have Excel work items and you uploaded that, that's uh, uh, your iteration will, uh, the query token will not work with Excel. Query progressive uh, disclosure. Um, now, if you lick, take a look on the query, uh, there is there are uh, options that you can have the query and click on the work items and it'll bring, bring you uh, certain information back. Now it will bring just the two levels. If you have multiple levels of your uh, uh, query uh, information that is being retrieved uh, with your query, it will only bring the two levels and other is on demand. If you wanted to look at the further levels, you can click and it's on demand. Uh, this goes back to the performance. Uh, before that, if you click, if you have a long query, if you uh, are loading uh, a huge uh, query and it's bringing a lot of data, you have to sit and wait for it to finish before you could take a look on the data. But now it takes uh, just the two levels and show you the data and rest, it will um, uh, be dependent on your input. So you have to click and go to the other levels. Um, branch plot policies, there are a lot of changes happened in uh, Git repository branches. You can basically define policies on um, uh, Git repository and certain policies are right here, the gated build. If um, you can define a policy that uh, the build has to be successful if uh, anybody else wanted to uh, commit their changes in your uh, a particular branch and same with code review uh, you can select a code reviewer and if that uh, uh, code reviewer hasn't approved that particular change then it cannot be committed by the way this is optional if you um, you can uh, just uh, select that uh, it's, it's okay if uh, the review is not done I still want it to commit it will commit however it will give you the warning that uh, uh, the the review has not been approved so it is not a good idea to commit your changes to the branch but uh, however it will let you know that uh, you know uh, this is great to, to have that branch history history has uh, uh, the history tab in team foundation server 2015 is enhanced a great deal uh, in team foundation server this is uh, also a Git repository enhancement, push and pull. A, a push for, in, a, as far as if you haven't used Git. In Team Foundation Server, push was uh, check in and pull is check out. So when we talk about the Git repository, it is push and pull instead of check in and check out. So you can look at the push and pull history just exactly like you could uh, uh, take a look on Team Foundation Server. Um, check in and check out. Uh, web history view, um, before that on web access, if you um, if you take a look on web access of Team Foundation Server, the history tab was not available. You uh, Now, if you open um, web access of Team Foundation Server 2015, the history tab is available. You can click on the folder, you can uh, click on the uh, different um, work items and right click and look at the history so this is a great enhancement as far as history goes you can take a look on history um the build automation system this is uh, we can't really talk about it unless we do it so when we do the demo we'll cover the build automation system there are enhancements great enhancements in build automation system you can have your test um, all the tests you can create and you can automate your test and we will do that uh, when we will do our demo Next is a team project rename. This um, this wasn't possible before, but now you can rename your uh, project and all the um, folders and um, your iteration and work items will reflect the new team project. And the old team project will be saved as a history. If you wanted to revert to old team project, you can select from the history. So this is again a great feature right here. REST API JSON support is available to integrate TFS with external devices and those external devices are such as Windows, iPhone, Android, um, Node.js. These are um, the external system that uh, uh, TFS wasn't ab able to integrate before, but now it's available. But how we uh, make this uh, REST API work, we have service hooks. So integration TFS with external devices such as iPhone and Android is done via service hook. So any changes, uh, we can create different service ho hooks and any changes that Team Foundation Server, um, if you do in Team Foundation Server, uh, your um, 
uh, iPhone or Android or all the external devices um, applications that's using they will recognize that and subscription just like email if something changes and you have a subscription that uh, if this changes I, I need to uh, know that and you send an email this is exactly like that in team foundation server you can create a service hook and it will show in your uh, application on your iPhone and you can whether accept it or deny it uh, there are a lot of uh, improvement in merge performance um, uh, before that uh, if you wanted to merge a lot of changes uh, it would take time but now it's improved also the cloud-based load test uh, you can use your own premise and if you wanted to run your uh, load test on uh, Microsoft Azure you can do that and again this was a quick overview of new features um, updates and as well as enhancement in the features there are some new features that that are uh, really great to use and we will take a look again in detail when we will uh, use these feature in each separate video from the scratch as well as we will use all the updates that's available. I hope this helps.